Hi, it's Dave of Urban Astro. I decided to do something a little bit different today, and that is I'm going to look at new blur exterminator. Now, I'm doing this not just because it's a new version that's out there. I'm doing this because, as many of you know, I've been having some issues with my old Astrotech 80 EDT. And I've noticed as I've gone through my images for this past year, you know, it's the end of the year, so everybody does a retrospective, right? So I was going through and I was looking at images to do a retrospective. And as I was looking through a lot of the images, I noticed that the issues that I encountered this fall, if I really pixel peeped, I saw that those issues have been ongoing for the whole entire time that I've had this telescope. Now, I first thought that I kind of had resolved the issue by just loosening the center uh, lens in the lens cell that seemed to take some pressure off and it seemed to reduce the pinched optics. But when I really look through and look at a lot of the images, especially the images that are in the winter months, it's really blatantly obvious. In fact, there's one image that was so bad that I did not even put out a starred image, um, an image with stars. I did a starless because the stars were so bad. Many viewers had suggested maybe going back and reprocessing some of those images using the new version of Blur Exterminator with the AI stuff that's been built into it. And so I figured I'd go ahead and I'd try that. And I've noticed two things. First of all, that my processing has gotten a lot better. <laughs> I looked at the images that I processed even just um, seven months ago, and I noticed that my processing has improved tremendously. And the second thing that I noticed is that, yeah, Blur Exterminator does help. It doesn't fix the stars, it doesn't resolve the issue, but it does make the final product more presentable. And so that's kind of what I wanted to show today. I wanted to demonstrate what using the new version of Blur Exterminator can do for you in terms of what you may have had prior to. So anyway, here we go. So here on my screen, this is an original version of SH2-157 which is the Lobster Claw Nebula right here and of course the Bubble Nebula which is right here as I'm circling. And there's a star cluster here and I'm not sure what its designation is. And here's another little nebulosity down here and there's another little cluster over here. But as we kind of zoom in here you can see that the stars, well they're misshapen. You can see that you have evidence here of pinched optics and pinched optics are noticeable by these little divots into the star shine that is around the star where like the star shine is gone uh, it's like somebody took um, a pie cutter and kind of cut out a small wedge and that's what you see here is evidence of um, these wedges here which is evidence of basically pinched optics and sometimes you'll get a corresponding on the perpendicular plane and you can see it like right here in this area right here and you can see it a little bit over here it's more noticeable on this star here you can see a little bit of a divot right there and a little bit of a divot right there and you notice that even some of the small stars are a little bit on the elongated side and this is in the center of the image. I haven't even gone to the edge. But some of these stars, because of the pinched optics, tends to make the stars look elongated. So if we even go to the edges here, and this is a processed image. Up here in the star cluster, you can just see all these pinched optic stars. And here's the bubble. The bubble looks absolutely gorgeous. But if we come down here to the end, to the bottom, you can see that, well, the star quality is, eh, it's lacking. It's not exactly fantastic. 
and again you get all these evidence of pinched optics that is just everywhere everywhere you look and the processing which is the one thing that I did notice is that my processing wasn't that great and up here I think this is really more evidence of some tilt in the system you get a little bit of elongated stars here which are really truly elongated and it's exacerbated by the pinched optics but I really think that a lot of this up here is due to tilt in the image train axis. That was this particular image and I did this I took this the set of images in December of 2022 so it was about a year ago and I processed this image in March I probably tried to process an earlier set of images and I just couldn't make it work and so I revisited it again in March. March is galaxy season so I generally tend to go back and revisit my images from the fall and the winter and play with them and this is what I came up with and it's not my best effort and you can tell that the processing is well, it's not the world's greatest processing. At least my processing I think has improved because here's what I just did. It's much more subtle and believe it or not, the stars, even though they do have evidence of pinched optics, as you can see right here, the pinched optics are a little less pronounced than they had been. Like here it's pretty significant. You can see that one, that one's really awesome. And if we come up here to the edge where we had issues beforehand, you see that the issues look much better. Yeah, you can see just a difference in star quality. And again, this new version, which is the more blue one, was run with the new Blur Exterminator. Uh, using the AI version number four. So it's Blur Exterminator version 2.0.0 and the AI version is four. And that's what I ran on this particular image when I was doing my post-processing. And you can see that it does fix for some of the problems that you have with elongated stars. Uh, these stars right here are right here. These three stars right here look like they're right up over here. My cropping's a little bit different on this one than this one, so it's showing up, but these stars look pretty circular. They look round, they look like stars. Whereas these, you can tell that they're pretty elongated. And so generally speaking, I think that this is a much nicer, this is a much nicer image in terms of my processing, but I also think that the results from Blur Exterminator are really, really useful. And again, I went back to reprocess this because I don't have an image with stars because I was, well, kind of embarrassed by it the quality of the stars. So even if you come up here to the star cluster, which is right up here towards this corner, you can see that the quality of the stars are fairly nice considering. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the quality of the stars and just do a match. Let me... There we go. So tell me what you think, uh, what the difference in star quality. You can still see that there's some pinched optics here, but they're not as obvious as they are in this image here. And the stars seem to be more round and less glowy, uh, less bloated. Now the star color, again, something to be, I don't know. I still have to work on my star colors. Uh, this is a SHO image, uh, sulfur, hydrogen, oxygen. So it's not natural stars and I probably should have taken some natural stars so that way I could have better star color. But 
beyond that, it's pretty impressive. And so I just kind of just want to do a really short video. So here's the bubble. Again, processing skills, I think have improved pretty good. Let me go ahead and move this over here because I want to see what the bubble looks like on this one. So there we go. Let's, there's the bubble. So you can see the, the processing is less in your face. It's less like boom and it's more uh, there's more texture I believe and it's also less noise uh, I did not have um, noise exterminator when I did this initial picture and you can see here that there's an area here of hydrogen that is captured here and looks much more natural you can see it right there than it does over here and you can see where the noise is and I don't know if you can even see these um, in the YouTube and how YouTube compresses everything but it's really blatantly obvious to me that uh, noise exterminator is a fantastic tool in and of itself and the other thing that I did specifically on this one was I process the stars so that you know in the old days you used to have to do star reduction in order to reduce your stars and essentially blur, blur exterminator kind of eliminates having to do the star reduction methods I had a whole bunch of scripts that I used for star reduction and I don't use them anymore in fact I got rid of them because Blur Exterminator does such a fantastic job at star reduction. And based on how you process, how you uh, stretch your stars, you can control how bright they are and how many end up coming into your photograph, whether or not you want all the faint stars or if you just want the brightest stars. And so you can manage how they come into your photograph. And I, you just got much more control than you ever did and so you know my hat off I don't not have a hat on right now but my hats off to Russell Perlman for providing these tools to us for us to purchase and for us to use um, blur exterminator and of course star exterminator and noise exterminator are the three that I use and the evidence here speaks for itself I also want to do a shout out to Graxpert. I used Graxpert in order to reduce the background gradients. Graxpert is a fantastic gradient remover and I was able to remove and there was very slight gradients. They weren't that bad. Not as bad as they typically or could be in my particular area but I was able to remove the gradients and I think it made for a much cleaner image than what I had produced just seven months ago. So the short story is, is that if you have these new tools, if you've got the new version of Blur Exterminator and you've updated it and you've got Noise, noise Exterminator and if you've got Graxpert, it's worth revisiting your old images and seeing if maybe you can breathe new life into them and seeing if maybe you can uh, see how well your own journey of post-processing has has grown and developed I mean I'm looking at these two I'm looking at these two images right now and I'm just amazed at how much more refined I feel the image on my on my right is but the image that's highlighted here how much more refined and how much more pleasing that image is compared to the image that I did just even seven months ago. If you found this at all helpful, please like down below and if you want, subscribe. And until next time, clear skies and happy guiding.